you're at a point where you're getting a lot of acclaim for a lot of things, and that's mm. because your art is so pure. Um, sure. The video that you're nominated the most for is Humble. Uh -huh. And like all of your videos, it's very beautifully shot and yeah. powerful. But it feels like this one is more rife with symbolism mm. than any of the other ones. Yeah. You're dressed as a cardinal, you're dressed as Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. there's a Last Supper thing, yeah. Pentecostal, heads on fire. Where did all these symbols come from and what do they mean to you? Yeah, I think when we sat down, um, me, Dave Free, and Dave Myers, um, I think the initial idea was to go off one of my favorite words, actually, contradiction. Mm. Um, everything is um, symbolism, basically all contradiction. When you listen to the actual lyrics and you see the visuals behind it, um, you know, they fight against each other, you know, and that's what make it unique to me, make it unique to all of us, you know, when the treatment was finally done. And for us to capture it on camera, you know, that's a whole nother technique. So um, kudos to Dave, uh, Dave Myers, you know, um, the angles and all that and, and the perspectives on, you know, how he directs, brought that video to life, for sure. How did you pick those individual symbols? Um, I, th I think it was just us being as wacky as possible. Yeah. Um, Dave Myers is known for that. Um, me and Dave Free, we're known to go out the box a little bit. Definitely. Um, so it was just us being, you know, uh, as free as possible, you know, when it comes to the art, you know, and just having fun with it at the same time, too. I like that you talked about contradiction because mm -hmm. there's definitely a duality to that song, mm -hmm. and there are many that play out over the album. Yeah. On Humble in particular, there's this duality of like you telling yourself to be humble, yeah. but also saying that you're the greatest rapper alive. Yeah. Why was that something that was important for you to express? You know, you want to be great at everything you do for sure, um, but at the same time, when being great and you know you're great, you cannot, you know, be comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you say things like "I have to be humble." You have to recognize there's somebody out there that wanna, you know, be as great as you are, better than you. You know, so it's all about challenging yourself and just that idea, idea of that word, you know, keeps me on my toes, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Greatness isn't a platform that you achieve and then you're there. Yeah. You have to keep fighting. You got to keep it. it, and that's the that's that's the true definition of greatness. You know, you still having that drive and having that hunger for whatever you're doing to inspire the next kid doing it. Mm. Yeah. That's important. The duality over the entire album is something that a lot of fans took to maybe mean there was a partner album or there are a lot mm -hmm. of theories that the partner album was the album itself played in reverse. Mm -hmm. Was that something that you thought about at all? Yeah, definitely. Um, many of my fans know uh, my albums get real intricate and there's always mm -hmm. details in there. And for the most part, they usually uh, have a good um, listening ear to figure out what's going on, you know, so. Uh, I think like after a week of the album come, came out, you know, they realized you can listen to the album backwards and, and it plays as a full story and even a better rhythm. You know, it's one of my favorites, rhythms and, and tempos within the album. So, you know, they're, they're pretty on top of the game and it's something that we definitely premeditate while we're being in the studio. How does the story change playing in the different directions? I don't think the story necessarily changes. I think the, the feel changes, mm. you know, and, and the vibe. The initial vibe, listen from the top, all the way to the bottom is just to come in and, and this aggression and this this attitude, you know, DNA and exposing who I really am. You know, when you listen from the from the back end, this is it's almost uh, the duality and, and the contrast of the intricate mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar. You know, mm -hmm. but both of these pieces are who I am. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm glad to finally know that you did mean to play yeah. it both ways. That's really cool. Appreciate it. So you have put out four music videos over the past four months, the mm -hmm. most recent being Loyalty. Yeah. I read recently that the song was born from a sample of 24 Karat Magic, mm -hmm. yeah. and that the day that you heard it, you said that you were going to get Rihanna on it. Mm -hmm. Did the concept for the video come to you that soon, too? Yeah. yeah. Um, a, lot, a lot of the, the visuals come, you know, when we in the studio. Of course, me and my partner, Day Free, after the song is completed, you know, we sit down and, you know, we go back and forth. But this song in particular, knowing that Rihanna will be on it and knowing the idea where I want to take the song, um, the initial idea was um, somewhat of a Bonnie and Clyde type thing, mm -hmm. but more of a, a high-end, high-fashion version, you know, yeah. 2017. I got a little Bonnie yeah. and Clyde or like yeah. a Joker and Harley Quinn. Yeah, it's turned into Joker <laughs> once, uh, <laughs> Once me and Dave free handed it to Dave Meyer. Yeah. <laughs> um, his whacked out brain took it <laughs> to a whole nother level. And um, yeah, it, it was basically one of them things, just, you know, when we work with, you know, 
humble to Dave Myers and, and loyalty for Dave Myers. It's basically him taking our initial ideas and broadening it to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I can come in and say, okay, high end Bonnie and Clyde out reckless, you know, and then it turns into the Joker once it's done and it's finished and completed, which, you know, broadens the idea and makes the, the art even more uh, unique to me. Right? Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I think it doesn't get talked about enough that you are part of the little homies and like creating this mm -hmm. visual for all of your art too. Mm -hmm. For Element, yeah. why was it important for the two of you to reference Gordon Parks? Uh, it's interesting. Uh, I start from the beginning, from the top of this record. Mm -hmm. uh, this record was done and uh, Dave, I keep having to say Dave Free because everybody makes it with Dave Myers since we do yeah. so many videos together. Um, Dave Free had this idea of having a moving visual mm. um, where it's not necessarily me performing the record, but an, an artistic uh, fine review of the actual song. And um, so he goes all the way to Germany and um, scouts this, this incredible kid, Jonas Lindstrom, um, the guy who directed it. They went over a few ideas. Dave knows I have a, a place in my heart for Gordon mm -hmm. and his art. And without being said, uh, this was Jonah's idea as well, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have that nuance inside the video. So immediately I said, yeah, this is the guy. This is the guy that's, that's for the job for this record. Mm -hmm. And um, brought back, they brought back the treatment to me, looked it over and, and I mean, you don't get too many individuals and directors that know uh, who the real guys are. You know, mm -hmm. this is a person that me and Dave actually studied, Gordon, mm -hmm. um, black photographer. It's almost the status quo of what we're trying to do. And um, Jonas recognized that, you know, so went through the pieces and, and, and find the, the, the intricate details of the legacy he's left and intertwined it with an attitude from the streets. Mm -hmm. Came out like that element. Yeah, what does Gordon mean to you and Dave Free as black filmmakers? Oh, it's the status quo. Mm -hmm. Gordon's the status quo. You know, when you look at what he's doing, is it's what he's done, fine art. Um, we can only carry on that tradition and how we visually look at certain things, the perspective, uh, uh, cinematography, and, and the duality of it. A lot of his stuff was duality too, and, mm -hmm. and, and contradiction. That's our whole thing, you know, so I would say Going to the status quo for us. Playing the space of not absolutes, right? Yeah. Like this yeah. like gray area. Yeah, definitely, because you know, that's what life is about. You know, sometimes we have the answers and, and, and sometimes we're still looking for the answers. And sometimes we shoot things that make sense to us, mm -hmm. you know, for what's coming out of our brains and what's coming out of our thoughts, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're here backstage on the damn tour. Yeah. Your music means so much to so many people. What does it feel like to be on stage and see your fans singing and rapping the words back to you? Man, it's an incredible feeling. I always go back to the, the moment I write the lyrics, you know, and then, you know, I foresee me being on the stage. Same thing I did with Good Kid, uh, To Pimper Butterfly, uh, with this album down, even my earliest mixtapes. It never gets old, you know, because you, you, you write these lyrics from a place where, uh, it's, it's, it's your true raw emotions, you know, whenever I, time I put a, a pen to the page, it's raw emotions, you know, so y'all, I don't know what I may get <laughs> sometimes, you mm -hmm. know, just depending on how I'm feeling within that day. So to come back out here and to see people rapping these lyrics from that raw emotion, from the feelings that I was feeling at the moment, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's magic to me. Is there a difference between preparing for a tour performance and an award show performance? Because you are performing at the VMAs this year. Yeah, an hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the time. <laughs> yeah, an hour and 30 minutes of pure sweating, you know. Yeah. Awards you have, of course, you have more viewers, you know, so you may have a little bit more pressure, mm -hmm. um, which makes it a little more fun for me because, you know, it's, it's a challenge on both ends. You know, I'm, I'm happy to see my fans and I'm happy to bring something uh, a great aesthetic, you know, on the stage, you know, mm -hmm. when it plays back for these viewers out here watching on MTV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are any elements from the tour going to make an appearance in that? Or? I don't know. I don't no, know no, yet. you're not. <laughs> I don't know yet. Tight lipped over here. Yeah, yeah. don't spoil it. I, I, I want to be surprised I, yeah, too. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, another member of the TDE family, SZA, is nominated mm -hmm. for a VMA for Best New Artist. Yeah. I know you love this album because oh, you yeah. haven't changed your Twitter avatar <laughs> from the art uh, yeah. since it dropped. What does it mean for SZA to be nominated for a VMA? Oh, come on, it's just well-deserved, you know. I watched her slave over and over, 
you know, to make a, a masterpiece that not only represent her, um, but represent women all over the world. You know, this is a record where it touched so many demographics, not only just women, you know, men, something that, you know, we all can feel. It touched so many different spaces and connect with so many people. There's nothing much more, you know, I can say she, she needs to win. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully sure. you're out there voting for her too. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. You're featured on the album mm -hmm. on Doves in the Wind. Yeah. How did that song come about? Because I know that SZA likes to get in the studio and like go off the dome very organically. Yeah. 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 She's like that. She's 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 a raw spirit. Yeah. A raw spirit and a crazy talent in the studio because mm -hmm. when she come up with them thoughts, they're right there and they're on point. Mm -hmm. um, that's a record that I heard her um, vibing out with months prior to the actual album coming out, and it was some a record that I always loved. Um, it just had a vibe to him. I never heard a female artist come from that perspective. It's mm -hmm. aggressive, you know, and it's, 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 it's unapologetic, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it just made me feel a certain type of way where I wanted to give my perspective, but not give my perspective on uh, what she's saying is wrong. Uh -huh. I actually agree with you too, right. you know, with the, with the subject matter. And uh, it was just a record I fell in love with. It was so many to choose from, but um, that, that stuck out to me. What about it stuck out to you? Um, the beat. Um, her approach, I mean, it's just little things that I've learned. You know, Ice Cube always, you know, said from the jump, the first line has to be the line that draws everyone in. Mm. Her first line was when she played it, click, really, they don't deserve, but yep. come on. <laughs> like, whoa, what is this? Where is this going? What are you talking about here? That's wild to me. That's you know? an incredible first line, if I've Yeah, heard. definitely, and that just drew me in even more, and that's her storytelling progresses, mm -hmm. you know just lured me into writing my own verse. I think a lot of fans would love a video for it. Is hey. there any chance that that might happen? Hey, oh, man, you gotta ask SZA. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sure she worked. I'm sure she worked. I would love that, though. Sweet. Yep. Well, best of luck to you with the VMAs. Appreciate it. Um, I'm sure at least the performance is going to be amazing, but like, yeah. if you're nominated for this many right. awards, the odds are pretty much in your favor. Hopefully, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Appreciate you. It.